Hello, and welcome to the In the Word podcast. This is the podcast that will help you to understand God's Word, build a stronger relationship with God, and develop habits that will help you love God and others better. And now, here's your host, Trevor Pope. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. We are here again with another episode of In The Word Podcast. What's going on, guys? Thank you for joining me once again. It is an honor and a privilege to be sitting here talking to you guys. Listen, if you are watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to like the video. Not only like the video, but hit that subscribe button. (laughs) Click that bell right on the side of the subscribe button. It will notify you every time we upload a video. Um, You can also listen to the podcast through audio on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and many other platforms on the internet. But listen, guys, I'm excited. It is always an honor and a privilege to get together with you guys. I pray that you had a great Labor Day weekend. Listen, Last week, I talked about, in episode 15, I talked about the spirit of cancel culture among Christians. Now, if you don't know what cancel culture is or call-out culture, I encourage you, go back and check out episode 15, which was last week's episode. I believe that it will be an encouragement to you. I got a lot of great feedback on it. You know, people told me that they were encouraged by it. Some people were honest about being in the space of finding themselves, you know, in the midst of that cancel culture or doing some things, you know, that we see that are done, you know, through cancel culture or through the ones that are really pushing that. And I just, you know, it was just a blessing to just, you know, see people be honest, see people comment and, you know, various things of that nature. But in one of the comments under the video on YouTube, there was a question that was asked. And that is going to be what I want to talk about in this particular podcast. I, I want to try to answer the question a little bit and just give my thoughts on it because the, the person actually asked me what my thoughts were on this particular topic. And I thought it was a great question. Now, I'm not going to try to figure out how to say this name because the way that they spelled it on YouTube is very unique, but it is spelled E L eight D D E B. I just want to say thank you. Um, for your comment and your question. And we're going to read that right now. And we're going to dive into this. But this is what the person said. E-L-A-D-D-E-B. Trevor, thank you for sharing this on-time word. And remember, we're talking about the spirit of cancel, cancel culture among Christians. That's, that's That was the video that this was commenting under. Trevor, thank you for sharing this on-time word. God loves us all. Amen. Speaking the truth in love is important at the right time. I cannot receive the rants that I hear and see because of the lack of love. And that was something that, you know, I was touching on in that particular podcast. So I encourage you guys really go and check that out. But I'm the same way, you know, and, and I don't want to get into it, but let's keep going. It says we need to be praying and waiting on God's release to speak. Something that is recently concerning are those saying that if a person chooses to vote for a Democratic candidate, that person is not supporting Christian principles. I do not have peace about this. There are flaws with both the Democratic and Republican parties. Believers and unbelievers are found in both. What are your thoughts? And I just want to say thank you. Again, for your comment and question. And it's funny because just two weeks ago on podcast 14, if you guys haven't had a chance to check that out, you know, I talked about the scripture, Second Timothy two and four, where it says no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And the reason why I talked about that on podcast 14 is because with this whole political climate, with the whole social injustice climate, 
with just, you know, things that are happening in our personal lives, financially, mentally, physically, spiritually, just everything that's going on in the world with you know, it's just so many things. I talked about the celebrity things that are going on that sometimes people are all entangled up in. It's like with all of these different things going on, you know, sometimes if we're not careful, we can find ourselves entangled in those things. And I talked about there's a difference of being involved in politics and being entangled in politics. There's a difference of being involved in social justice issues and being entangled in them. You know, and I just talked about, you know, when sometimes when we get in Entangled, and I don't want to dive into it when you get when you guys get a chance check it out but when you find people entangled in these things you know they'll get so crazy that if you don't agree with them they'll cut you off they'll cut family members off you know they you know they'll stop coming to the church whatever it is that it causes them to do you know they just get really crazy and out and insane with it you know and and it was mainly me talking more or less to Christians because I understand people in the world that don't have this Holy Spirit resolve in them don't know the Lord as the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior I can get them getting irate and getting crazy over these various topics but we that are saved you know no man war if you know no man that is fighting this spiritual war no man that is involved in the spiritual war no man that is a soldier for Jesus Christ that is a soldier of the Lord entangleth himself with the affairs of this life it does not mean that they are not involved but when you get entangled and you get all crazy you know, it, it can really be bad for you and everyone else around you and everyone that is in your life. So when you get a chance, check that out. Check that out. But the reason why I brought that up is because with what this individual asked in this particular comment, I think, you know, when it deals with this issue, with this with this whole political thing that's going on, this whole campaign and things of that nature, a little bit of that is what you see when you see people just say really, you know, you know, mean things, you know, uh, pretty much, you know, you got some out here that will question your Christianity or question your salvation, I should say, with the Lord. And I think that's where we cross the line. Now, as far as someone saying, you know, if you choose to vote for the Democratic candidate, that person is not supporting Christian principles. You know, it's funny because a friend, a friend of mine and I, my, my boy, Bryant, we were having this conversation about that, you know, just about this whole entire thing. A lot of things that are being said. And he brought up a very good point because we both definitely don't agree with somebody saying, oh, you know, your salvation is 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 questionable because you know you're not supporting who I'm supporting or because these individuals are supporting what they're supporting you know your 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 christianity or your salvation is questionable and we were talking about that and he brought up a very good point because we both don't agree with that there's no way that you can tell me that I'm not saved because of what I believe or what I support when it comes to this political arena. But one thing that he said that was powerful, and I want you guys to understand this, neither he or I are into the politics things, into the voting thing. So our conversation and even what I'm saying now is not to push anybody, you know, either way or to lean to this side or lean to that side. Because honestly, me personally, for my own personal reasons, a lot of the stuff that are going on in this campaign, the speeches, the debates and all that, I don't really watch any of it. And it's for my own personal reasons, you know, that I don't get involved in politics. And that's not to deter anybody else from being involved in politics. I have never, ever, as long as I've been living, ever told anybody, listen, because I don't vote, you shouldn't vote. And that's why I don't like when people find out that I don't vote or that I'm not into politics, that they pretty much try to give me all these reasons of why I should be. It's like, listen, this is my choice and I'm doing it for a reason. So I want you to understand that this conversation that sparked between us and that, you know, we were discussing, you know, this topic and what we were talking about, it wasn't, you know, motivated by any type of political views we have or any type of ca candidates that we support. But he brought up this point that I thought was very good. And he was saying that, what we do see some saved people, Christians, whether they're leaders, whether they're, they're believers, when they say that when you support a certain candidate, 
you know, you're not supporting Christian principles. That is understandable what they are saying, because basically what they are saying is if this person supports abortion or this or that, something that goes against the word of God and you are a supporter of this person or you may be thinking about voting for this person or have voted for this person, that you are not supporting Christian principles, that you're you're pretty much going against you know, Christian scripture or the, or Bible scripture. So it's understandable, you know, what they're saying when they are saying that, you know, but it's, but that doesn't mean that you are not saved or that your salvation is at question because a lot of times in a lot of these parties and I, and in this individual, this person brought this up, they said there are flaws with both the democratic and Republican parties, which is a fact you know, there are definitely flaws in both and there are definitely believers and unbelievers that support both. But I do understand when somebody may say to you, depending on who you support and, and if they are going against scripture, I can understand where they could say, listen, you by you going with this individual, you are not necessarily supporting biblical scriptures. But I do understand where somebody may say to you as an individual, as a person, that if you are supporting somebody that supports abortion or they support gay marriage or whatever it is that they support that goes against the Bible, I do understand where somebody will say or or could say to a person that you are not supporting biblical scriptures or you are not, you know, you are not supporting the biblical principles or the things that God wants us to stand on. I do understand somebody saying that. And I don't think that's wrong for them to say that because and if you think about it, it's true, but it does not mean that first of all, that your salvation is in question. And it does not mean that even this individual in this party that may not support abortion, that may not support, uh, you know, same sex marriage or whatever have you, that does not mean that they aren't doing things themselves that are going against scripture. And a lot of times they are. And that's why I tell people you have to be very careful when you find yourself getting all crazy over politics and over these campaigns and over these candidates. You know, I, I see people all the time argue back and forth about if Obama was the best president, if Trump was the best president. Listen, let me be honest with you. As long as I've been living, I don't care who's been president. Spiritually and morally, I have not seen pretty much anything change. And even in my individual life, I can't even tell you how much no matter who was in office, how much it helped me in my individual life. Because most of the times when a lot of these individuals get in office, a lot of things that they said that they would do, they would, they, they just, they just don't do now understand. That's not really the reason why I don't get into politics, but that's one of the things that I see. They promise all of these things or they come by your local church. They come here, they come there. And then once everything is over, you don't see them again. It's a campaign time. And these are just some of the things that just on the outside looking in, I'm like, man, this is crazy. But when you see people get all caught up and they act like this particular party is perfect and the other is not, no, that is not the case. You know what I mean? And the thing that I tried to explain to people and just remind them is, is yes, you know why there's flaws in both parties? You know why you're not going to probably ever find, a, you know, a hundred percent Christian in either party. And what do I mean by a hundred percent Christian? Somebody that stands on God's word. You know why you probably never see that? Because this is Satan's system. He is the God of this world. And that's why in any of these systems that belong to him in this world, there's going to be corruption. There's going to be pedophilia. There's going to be sex trafficking. There's going to be adultery. There's going to be bribery. There's going to be scandals and people just getting over and stealing money. And 
You're going to find all of these things. It is impossible to get in any of these arenas as an individual and think that you're not going to have to deal with some type of corruption. If you as a saved person was able to get into any of these different government organizations, political organizations, you are going to find corruption. And I'm talking about the type of corruption that is going to test your belief in God. Because in all honesty, the only thing that is going to be left to do is walk away from it because that's how bad it is. But a lot of times we want to convince ourselves that, you know, I'm going to be the one to make a difference or I'm going to be the one that's going to clean this situation up or Listen, the system is what it is. The scripture is very clear. Satan is the God of this world. And we know that he's going to have that reign until the Lord comes back. Look at what 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 says. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world talking about Satan, have blinded the minds of them which believe not. And let me say this before I finish the scripture. Just because somebody does not believe in, you know, things that go against the Bible, that does not necessarily make them a Christian. And I am not here to question anybody that is running for president, governor, mayor, whatever it is they're running for. I am not here to question anybody's salvation or to say if somebody's saved or they're not. But let's make it clear that just because somebody does not support a particular thing, somebody just may not like to see two men together. That don't mean that they're saved. That don't mean that they stand on the word. That don't mean that they believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. And this is something that we have to understand. But listen what the scripture says. Verse four again, it says, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Understand those that are not believers, Satan has control over their mind. If you think about what salvation is, obviously it's, save, it's God saving us, the Lord coming, dying for our sins, being rose again, saving us from sin, saving us from that death, bridging that gap be that was there between us and the Father. Now we have the opportunity to be one with the Father. But what happens when we get saved? We get sealed with the Holy Spirit. But what happens? A transforming, a renewing of our mind. Why? Because Satan was the controller of it before God got a hold of it or before we were saved. So those that are not saved, that are not truly standing on the Lord's word and have the seal of the Holy Ghost understand Satan has their mind so the scripture goes on to say and I'm gonna read that verse four again in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not lest unless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them he does not want them to to be able to behold that light the glorious light of Jesus Christ that's why he, he's constantly those that are in the world if you really pay attention on as a, a saved person on the outside looking in just look at how much stuff he dumps on their mind to try to keep them clouded and blinded from the truth and that's why it is only by the grace of God you could be saved. That's why nobody could say, oh, I just decided to be saved. I just got tired of living. How No, that is impossible because you was under such a crazy spiritual control that you don't even really understand. It was nothing but the love and the grace of God. And I just wanted to make that clear on today. Like, yes, I understand what they may be saying about the Christian principle part, but listen, let's be clear about this. No matter which side stands for what, if you if if God was able to give you a glimpse of what was going on in the inside of all of those parties, both of those parties from now until years, you know, before a lot of corruption, a lot of scary things, a lot of nasty things. It is just what it is. So my thing is, is if you're going to be involved in it and, and, and me saying all this is not saying that you shouldn't vote. If that's what you are into, that's what you are into. If that's what you are involved in, fine. But don't get entangled in this because, listen, it's a mirage. Everything that you're seeing on TV, everything that's being said, it's way more going on behind the scenes. It's just like the spiritual and the natural. Even though we walk around each day, those of us that understand what the scriptures talk about, the principalities and high places and all that, it's more going on in the world 
world that we can't see than it is in the natural world. So understand it's the same thing with a lot of these politics. It's the same thing with the government. So when you find us as saved people arguing back and forth and, oh, you don't support this guy. Don't you know God is using this guy? And, you know, it's just, you know, uh, or don't you know that God has condemned this party? It's like, listen, you guys are are more heavily into politics than God is. God is not worrying about politics and who is president and who is governor. Of course he allows it. God allows everything because everything is going to happen according to his will, but God don't have no favorite candidate. He can use anybody. We seen that with Pharaoh. Pharaoh, God used him to, to show his power. God can use whatever and whomever he want. Just because any candidate, guys, any candidate just because they support Christian principles, because they they have some Christian values, it does not mean that they are saved. And it does not mean that they're not saved. But what I'm here to tell you guys is, for us that are on the outside looking in, that are not fully involved in this process, fully don't know what's going on behind the scenes, except what CNN is telling us, except what Fox is telling us, except what this one is telling us. It's like, listen, you need to be praying and really asking God to help you to see what is really going on, because it's a lot to this stuff. And if you've been living any length of time, you have to step back and say, man, listen, you know, I've been I've been at this thing for years and it it's it's almost like a merry-go-round. It's the same thing all the time. No matter who's running, no matter who's not running, a lot of the same lingo, a lot of the same accusations, a lot of the same behavior. And my thing is like, listen, if you're gonna be involved in that, if you if you wanna vote on all of that, fine. But one thing I also see when it comes to this, that for me, that's somebody that's not even involved in politics or vote, but this is very disturbing to me. And this is because I've had conversations with different people. You know, Hosea four and six says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And this is, you know, this is talking about the children of God, but he says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge, meaning his word. He says, I also will reject thee that thou shalt be no no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Now that is talking about, he, he's taught the, the scripture is saying my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. Or in other words, my word, you have rejected my word, the things that I've told you to do. But the reason why I wanted to read that scripture is because when I even look in this natural political climate, people are destroyed because of their lack of knowledge of what is going on in these situations. Listen, one thing I've learned about this, just listening to different talking points and people talking like just on just on the, the citizen level. Listen, people are not doing their homework. People are people. I've had somebody tell me that they support a particular party because their grandparent raised them that way. You know what I mean? Like I've always supported this party because this is just how I was raised. It 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 has nothing to do with who stands for what, who's doing what, who's accuser. Like there's no homework there for that. It's just like I support this guy because of this thing and I support this guy because of that thing. It has nothing to do with doing homework to see who's really kept their word, to see who's lying. You know, everything is just you know what? I don't like this guy, so I'm not messing with him. This guy doesn't, uh, uh, you know, this guy doesn't support the police force, so I'm not messing with him. This guy doesn't support Black Lives Matter, so I'm not messing with him. It's just, it's just all of these, you know, these surface things, and it's, it's not that they're not things that don't matter, but you gotta dig a little deeper. You gotta do your homework and find out what's going on with all these people. Like I said, you're gonna find out that all of them ain't right. All of them got stuff going on that they shouldn't have going on. And even some things that have not come out that are scary and that's been going on. But at the end of the day, if you're going to be into all of the politics things, listening to the debates, you know, voting and all of this stuff, man, do your homework. Don't allow yourself to make decisions off of your emotions. Let me tell you something. And I talked about this, I think, in one of the previous podcasts. 
one of the major ways, me being in, in church for a long time now, and, you know, I used to go to church when I was young, didn't really understand everything, but me being in church as an adult, being able to see things and understand things has been 18 years now. Listen, one of the easiest ways that I've seen preachers get over on the congregation is by getting them emotional. When you get people's emotions going, you know, it is easy to manipulate them. It is easy to cause them to make decisions that maybe if they weren't so emotional, they would not normally make. And that is what I see from both parties, from, you know, from both sides of the supporters. It is a lot of emotionalism. You know, a lot of images are constantly being put on on television and on social media and all that. And I see how people react to these different images and these different videos. They get all emotional. They get all crazy and they just make a decision off of their emotions. And this is, this is one of the, this is what makes it very scary. Do you know how many times I've seen somebody post up something on Facebook about somebody, and this may not even have to have anything to do with politics. It could just be about something else. You know how many times I've seen somebody post something up on Facebook and people go in on it and they're sharing it. And, 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 and a lot of times these are saved people that I'm, I'm watching, I'm, I'm watching the post. They're going sick and just looking at the post. I'm like, this doesn't even really sound right. I go research it. It's a fake post. So you got preachers that done shared this. You got people in the congregation, maybe some ushers, uh, deacons or whatever, you know, but people that it's not even about the position, but the fact that we all supposed to have the Holy Spirit and know that we just can't just emotionally jump on some information and ride it. But we should first check and see how accurate it is or see how true it is. But yet, no, spirit filled people. I love Jesus. The Holy Spirit resides in me immediately starts typing, immediately starts hitting the share button and come to find out that this stuff was not even a real story. This wasn't even a real story. And there's times that there's preachers in the city that I that I that I grew up in because I'm a town over now. But the city that I grew up in, prominent preachers, pastors, you know, that's been around 30, 40 years that have done this, that where I had to kind of like message them or something to say, listen, that's that's not an accurate story. And some may take it down and some won't because the pride says, oh, I'm I'm not going to take it down. I said what I said, but it's not true. And. And what I see in this climate and in the times that we are in, a lot of people saved and not saved are allowing their emotions to run away with them. And that's why we have these situations where we as saved people can't sit down and disagree about who we support as a candidate without saying, you know what, since you don't support this person, once again, I can, I can understand if somebody say, listen, this person stand for this, 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 and that, that goes against the Bible. You know, if you, if you vote for this person, you're not supporting biblical scripture. And guess what? I'm sure that individual that you said that to can look at your party and say, well, this person did this, 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 and that. If you deal with them, you're not supporting biblical scripture. You know what I mean? So that is just what it is. So we should be able to have some type of conversation and not allow it to turn into a question of our salvation. A question of if you are still my brother and sister in Christ, a question of if I still love you, a question of are we going to still communicate after today? And that's what podcast 14 was about, that entanglement. I'm telling you, people are getting crazy out here. You know what I mean? Especially those that don't have the Holy Spirit residing in them, don't have the word to kind of check them on certain things. Man, you got people beating people up because of signs of certain candidates they got in their lawns. You got people going out shooting and doing... Listen, it is nuts out here. So we have to be careful as saved people. Don't find yourself getting all crazy over this stuff. Remember who system this is. I'm not telling you not to vote. I'm not saying your vote don't matter. No, I'm not saying none of that. I have, once again, I have never encouraged anybody not to vote. And that's why I don't like when somebody tries to encourage me or say that I should be voting for X, Y, Z. No, we all have 
our own personal choices. And guess what? God has never said to me, you, you, you need to vote or else. So until God says that, then I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. But I just want to encourage you guys. Listen, we should still be loving one another. How is it that we are not showing the love to one another over individuals that are not even saved? Some that will tell you straight up they don't care anything about God or they don't believe in God or they may act like they believe in God and, and say things of God and quote certain things and may not live nowhere near the lifestyle. It's like, how are we getting at each other that we know are standing on a solid foundation for people that we don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. And this ain't no knock to them because we're praying for all of them that they get saved and that they come to know God. So this isn't a personal thing with any, anybody in politics or anybody in the government. But what I'm saying is we that are in the citizenship of the kingdom of heaven, we that are citizens of the kingdom of God, it is no way that we should be talking crazy to one another. It's no way that we should be getting at one another as children of God, as those that are one in the body of Christ. So once again, I truly appreciate the person that made this comment and posed the question. Once again, E-L-A-D-D-E-B. I just want to say thank you because a friend and I we're just talking about this particular subject. And, you know, I was like, listen, I need to just just share my thoughts on this. So I appreciate you asking my thoughts and giving me the opportunity to say how I feel about it. I hope that I brought some clarity to to your question and to, you know, your thoughts as well. But, yeah, don't allow anybody to make you feel any type of way. Bring all of that before God. Ask God, listen, God, what do you want? me to do in this situation? How do you think I should handle it? And the scripture promises uh, promises us, you know, Proverbs 3 and 6, it says, acknowledge God in all your ways and he shall, he will direct your path. So that's a promise. So all you got to do is bring it all before the Lord and he's going to make everything clear. And from there, you know, you'll have the peace. All of us, you know, will have the peace in whatever decision we that we need to make that we bring before the Lord. Once he gives us that go ahead and what to do, then we'll have peace about it. We won't have to worry about what anybody's saying. It won't even bother us because, listen, God has spoken. That's what it is. And I'm done with it. But, yeah, guys, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you once again for joining me on this podcast. And until the next time we get together, Shalom.